This is going to be really brutal. I would argue most Christians are so theologically weak and don't open their Bibles that they are spoon fed whatever this pastor or that pastor yeah. wants to spoon feed them. So th there's an interesting story. So we put a post out um, probably three weeks ago and I was frustrated. And I was like, you know what? For all you people saying we're not showing the other side of the coins, we've sent out over 800 emails. No pastors are responding. So if you're a pastor, shoot us a DM. I'll take a call personally with you and we're going to fly out and sit down with you. Over 250 pastors responded. It was the coolest thing ever. So one of them is from Germany and uh, he's a German Methodist pastor. And in Germany, to become a minister, it's, it's rigorous and you have to go to seminary. You, you have to speak Latin, Greek. Um, he speaks German and English. So four languages, genius guy. And, he, and I'm like, so what brought you to America? Because he'd never lived in America. And he's like, I moved here six months ago because my father was an American. He came over during the war, knocked up my mom. And, you know, he's, he's died now. He's like, I want to experience America. So I asked to transfer to a Methodist church mm -hmm. in America. And he goes, and so I was like, this is really interesting. And so, because in Germany, if you want to give to your church, you give through your tax return. So there's literally a box where you check your denomination mm -hmm. and then based off the, the, the taxation of that denomination, wow. you pay the government, then the government pays the church. So talk about church and state still married, Germany is that. But so I'm like, what is the biggest aha moment you saw in an American church? And he said, when I first started preaching, I would preach something and I'd look up and everybody would be like, amen. And I would say, stop, sit down. Like, question what I'm saying. Actually open mm -hmm. your Bible and see if what I'm saying is accurate. And he goes, Nathan, it, it saddened me to see how dumb American Christians are. They don't care to like dive in. And that's a very broad brush, but he's like, yeah. most people just took what I had to say as like God given fact. Mm -hmm. in, in the video we posted today, the title is theology. You can't have theology without psychology. And so even though he's up there trying to preach the, the words from the Bible, his own interpretation of that is coming out. Mm -hmm. And he's like, the last time something like that happened, where a whole group of people in mass took verbatim what a leader was saying, what happened? Genocide, Hitler. yeah. Genocide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, uh, he's like, it terrifies me that Christians in America are so biblically illiterate now and they just listen to what, I think Billy Graham's a great guy. They listen to what Billy Graham said. They listen to what Joel Osteen says, Creflo Dollar, Kenneth Copeland, and they take it as 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 the message of Christ. And that's that's the scary part to me. Well, I think what's confusing to me, I recently had an episode and we made a clip out of it where I was talking about like my spirituality and my understanding of the Old Testament and the New Testament and how there seems to be like a massive discrepancy in, in God itself. Like mm -hmm. the, the they seem like two different things and I'm getting torn apart in the comment section because if you talk about Christianity like they come in hot yeah. and I was like how dare you think you're anyone to even question anything like you just need to take this and I'm like no I in the clip itself I talk about like one of the beautiful things about um like about the Jewish religion is that's the whole point is wrestling with God. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to, you're not supposed to yeah. take everything. And the way that I interpret this is gonna be totally different than how you do. And yeah. who's to say whose perspective is, is mm -hmm. correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but for some reason there is like a mass understanding that you're not supposed to interpret it. It's not for interpretation. Mm -hmm. Like that is what people will say that are like very mm -hmm. ideological. And that seems a little bit scary because again, why am I taking your interpretation? Like mm -hmm. it's almost like before the Bible was translated, like you don't want people to know because then they have to think for themselves. Correct. Well, there's a difference, which I got torn apart. I did a live stream with my, uh, our biggest hater. Oh god. But um, I That's I said brave. there's uh, what's up. That's brave. Yeah. I, I, I he ended up eating himself alive, but um, it took a while, sadly. But um, there's a there's a like a one of the we'll call him founding fathers of the psychedelic re revolution um alan watts mm -hmm. i love his work um mm -hmm. just to make it makes me think but um he uh, he says this thing there's a difference between belief and faith and and on that live stream everybody's like you th don't don't bring in that psychological jargon and i'm like well we're all individual beings with, beings with our own thought process so no matter what we have to bring in psychology yep. but um belief is a belief in a like presuppos presupp presupposition 
of what you think is accurate. So like those Christians believe the 66 book canon, the Protestant canon of the Bible is the literal word of God. Mm -hmm. And then anything outside of that is, is a, an attack on, on their faith. Faith though, is you're putting faith in this journey that it's going to lead you where you need to go. And so there's a big difference between belief and faith. And it, it I didn't switch, flip that switch until my late twenties, I would say. Like I had belief in Christianity my whole life, but I didn't even know this thing called the Apocrypha existed. And that, that was an extra set of books in the Bible for the first 1800 years. And so when I heard about that, I was like, wait, what? There was books that were taken out of the Bible a couple hundred years ago. And so the 66 book Bible, like, is it the literal word of God? And once you start exploring it with this, with this idea of faith where I'm not scared where it's gonna lead me, the story becomes way more beautiful. And it, that's what you're doing. You know, you're exploring faith and exploring spirituality. And it's just sad that Christian, Christians have become, and it goes back to the conversation about the German pastor. Christians have become so illiterate in regards to their theology that they're just scared of anything that, that doesn't sound exactly like them. Mm -hmm. And that's, I painted with a very broad brush there, but it's like, that's the problem with current, the current like evangelical Christian, Christian is they're scared to debate and without just screaming. <laughs> it's, it's scared to offend, right? Like that's where the prosperity gospel ki kicks in, mm -hmm. where we're just gonna talk about how everything's gonna be great and everything's gonna be good and what yeah. it takes to do that versus having some of those hard, uncomfortable discussions. And you get to a point where you're like, do you even really truly know what you're getting defend? Like what, what do you really truly know what you're defending? Mm -hmm. You're being offensive, but do you really know what you're, what you're standing up for? Yeah. Mm. And that's a, a whole other level. Yeah, the miracle, um, like the promising of miracles is also really interesting too because to piggyback off of that, you have someone that'll come up with an ailment and they're assuming that it, everything is supposed to be perfect. So you might have someone that's wheelchair bound or they're blind in one eye or whatever the case may be. And they're like, Jesus needs to heal me. But it's like, what if that is actually part of the process? Like what For if sure. it's yeah. not supposed to go yeah. away? Mm -hmm. And that sucks, of course. Like you wanna be in like full health and full capability. But like, it's like, you're kind of missing the point. Like you, there's yeah. supposed to be trials and tri tribu tribulations. And that's like yeah. what mm -hmm. makes you stronger and gives you growth. And ever if everything is perfect, you're gonna be stagnant. So yeah. like maybe that is a gift in a weird way. Like your one eye that doesn't work is the gift. And the fact that mm -hmm. you don't see it and you keep paying this pastor $2,000 a month, like you're so lost. Mm -hmm. And I see that with identity and like putting the label on you. And like, it's not to take away the value of religion because I think there is a lot of it. Mm -hmm. But I think that when you put a label on something, you kind of get calcified in that mm -hmm. thing. So if it's I'm a Catholic or I'm Jewish or I, whatever the thing might be, it's like now I can't wrestle with these ideas mm -hmm. because now I'm almost dogmatic in them. For sure. So, I mean, there's a lot of flexibility that I think that people are willing to strip away that label. And it's not to, again, like take God out of the equation. I think that's important for most people to believe in something bigger mm -hmm. than yourself. But... Like, I don't, I don't think letting someone else decide what that journey is makes sense. And I saw that you had Nietzsche, Nietzsche on your reading list and I love him. Yeah, like, yeah. I think he's amazing. Um, and that one of the quotes that I just did for a solo episode, it's not out yet, but it was um, as for like the right way, the only way, the true way, it does not exist. Mm -hmm. So when anyone is speaking for God and this is what God says, and if yeah. you don't give me money, you're off of his list, run the other way. For sure, yeah, <laughs> Run the other way. 100%.